What's up guys, Jake here. It's hard to argue with the fact that cryptocurrency has forever changed the world of finance. Especially the finance YouTuber community, it seems like a majority of the content being created this day is about cryptocurrency. But even if you go with the mainstream news, like CNBC, they're constantly talking about cryptocurrencies. So in this video, let's talk about it, and let's do a thought experiment. Now, I'm not advocating that this is what's going to happen, but I'm arguing that this is a possibility and that it should be explored, that cryptocurrency is actually a huge threat to capitalism. And if you're a fan of capitalism like I am, then this should concern you. Now, maybe if you don't like capitalism, I still don't think this is gonna play out the way that you would like. And first thing I wanna say is that if you buy Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency, then I want for your investment to succeed. I don't want anybody to lose money. I'm not rooting for cryptocurrency to fail. I'm just trying to explore what, what, what consequences could come of its success. And full disclosure, I do not own any cryptocurrencies. I've never bought nor have plans to buy any cryptocurrencies. I'm waiting for additional information. And I made a video on my channel because people keep commenting that they want me to talk about it about three months ago saying, I do not buy Bitcoin, how Bitcoin could go to zero dollars. And I made this video on February 21st, 2021, when Bitcoin was going parabolic. It hit $55,000 uh, a, a coin. And I just remember saying in the video, guys, Show me a graph of a stock or an asset or anything where it goes parabolic like this and it, it just keeps going up forever. There's going to be a pullback. The last time Bitcoin went parabolic here, you know, it's, it's kind of like this fractal where you can zoom out and it's just going to keep repeating itself. So even if I wanted to buy Bitcoin, I knew at these prices after this extreme movement that this wasn't a good time. So let's check in on our favorite cryptos and see how they're doing. And uh, the, the one month performance, Bitcoin is down 37%, Ethereum is down 13%, and Dogecoin is down 20%. And from their all time highs, they're down even more. Now, uh, people will tell me in the comments section, they'll say, hey Jake, this is a volatile asset. There's gonna be fluctuations. It's gonna go up and down. Okay. So in this video, let, let, I'm, I'm going to assume your premise is correct. We are going to, in this video, make the bull case. So if, if, if Bitcoin is, is going up forever, then it's an escalator. This is how I view cryptocurrency, basically. It's an escalator that I can get on at any time. If it only goes up in one direction forever, then it doesn't really matter when I start my, my trip on the escalator. Let's assume the premise is correct. The crypto bulls are correct. One Bitcoin is going to $1 million a coin. We're currently at uh, the share, uh, the, the coin price being 36,000. So we're only 3.6% of the way there. So let's, let's think about the return that crypto is gonna give me over my lifetime if I were to buy it. And Bitcoin, for example, was going to $1 million a coin. So let's assume a time period of 20 years and we're starting at the share price today of 36,000, then Bitcoin's going to give me an annual return rate of 18.1% a year. Okay, that's pretty good. That's double what the stock market is. So what is my purchasing point? When do I want to buy into Bitcoin? I'm going to say $250,000 a coin. Now you're saying, Jake, why would you why would you wait? You're going to be kicking yourself on all those gains. I don't really care. To me, for Bitcoin to prove itself, it's got to get to $250,000 a coin. And I don't care because once it gets here, aren't I still on the escalator that only goes up forever? You know, what what is the opportunity cost? when the thing is just going to keep going up forever over my life. This is what the crypto bulls are arguing. So if I get on the escalator when it's 25% of the way there, I'm still going to quadruple my money over my lifetime, doubling the average return of the stock market. So, so this, is, this is the thought experiment that I wanted to share with you guys, why I don't feel the FOMO, why I don't feel the urgency to buy today. When you're looking at a parabolic graph like this one and you're saying, oh my God, I got to buy it now, 99% of times that's a recipe for disaster and you're just going to lose money.
So let's get to the core of my argument for this video in that the Bitcoin bulls are correct and cryptocurrency is the future of all payment transactions, a decentralized currency, down with central banks, down with government regulation. People like Andre Jeek and the Millennium Money crew are correct. Let, let's explore this crypto utopia and what could potentially happen. Now, obviously, this is not a thought experiment. I'm not telling you what will happen. I'm giving you a, a possibility. It's the year 2041, 20 years in the future. Bitcoin has hit $1 million a coin. What could be the fallout? What could the world look like? And I would argue this would be a golden age for hackers, for drug dealers, sex traffickers, kidnappers, blackmailers. I think there would be a lot of instability in the world uh, from people trying to extort or exploit or rob other people of their crypto. Perfect example of this was recent, you know, with the hacking of the colonial pipeline. Hackers have realized that if they can receive payments from corporations in crypto, it's untraceable. If you're demanding that money be wired, it's got to go through a bank. They're going to catch you. If you demand physical cash, this is hundreds of dollars to get billions. It's hundreds of dollars worth of bricks of cash that can be traced and you've got to deposit it somewhere. Banks and governments are going to fine you if you engage in illegal activity. But if we're living in this, this utopia future where people only accept and use payments in crypto, then I think uh, nefarious actors, uh, why, would you, why would you work an honest day's living when, when you can do one of these illicit activities and just get your crypto that way? The consequences on the economy would also be devastating as we would experience massive deflation. Cryptocurrency has replaced fiat money. Nobody wants to touch or deal or transact in fiat money anymore. So if Bitcoin or whatever is going up at a rate of 18% a year, that's the equivalent of us experiencing 18% deflation every year. Find me a country or an economy in the world that is experiencing any deflation and it's having a positive impact on their economy. The reason why central banks and governments aim for inflation at a rate of 1% to 2% a year is so there's an incentive to spend your money. If you have $100, and that $100 is only going to be worth 99 next year, you have an incentive to invest and to spend it to stimulate the economy. If everybody is just hoarding their crypto, their Bitcoin, because it's going to be worth more the next year, then nobody is spending money. If nobody is spending money, we're going to see massive declines in retail, in tourism, in every form of consumption. This would lead to massive rises in unemployment, uh, shopping centers being even more hollowed out than they are now, uh, companies failing as nobody is willing to spend their money because their money, their crypto, is only going to be worth more money next year. And it's this point that the remaining people who still have jobs are probably going to demand payment only in crypto. Why would you want worthless fiat money if governments are going to keep printing it? Workers would demand from their employers that they would only be paid in crypto. So let's figure it out. What's, what's $12 an hour in Bitcoins? It's 0 0.0003. However, the price of Bitcoin only goes up. So they would be, uh, these 0 0.003 Bitcoins would be worth more next month, next year. So the employee would now would be making more, but the employee can't make more because that would hurt the business. The business would go under if wages went up. So employers would constantly have to be deflating their own employees' salaries uh, in Bitcoins to keep it pegged to the dollar, which nobody cares about, nobody wants. This is getting kind of comical or silly, but I'm, I'm just trying to explore what, what, what could happen if crypto did become the reserve currency for the average person. And the biggest threat to capitalism would come from private investment. Capitalism is people with ideas going to people with money, people with capital, those are the capitalists, and for a share of that idea, for the share of this startup or new company, they, 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 they give money and they receive part ownership. However, why would the sharks ever uh, risk their money on a new idea, on a startup, when Bitcoin is a guarantee, if, if you can just put all your money in crypto and it only goes up forever, 
why would you ever risk your money on a new idea, on, on a private investment that could fail? For venture capitalists, they, they just plan to invest in five or 10 startups knowing that 90% of them are going to fail. But if they can 10x their money or 100x their money on that one, that one that succeeds, then they can get all their money back for their failures. And capitalism needs those failures. They need those experiments in order for the successful ones to propel our economy, to advance us as a species basically on this planet. The reason why we have such nice things is because of capitalism and its experimental process. But this wouldn't work if the venture capitalists just say, hey, I can guarantee a higher return if I just buy crypto. Which leads us to the next threat to capitalism in that why would anybody ever buy corporate bonds? There are lots of reasons why our largest corporations have to issue debt. And what's the rate of return on a corporate bond? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10% maybe at most. Why would you ever waste your money uh, buying corporate bonds when Bitcoin or cryptocurrency is a guarantee? It only goes up forever. So corporations uh, in this uh, crypto utopia future would really struggle uh, issuing debt. So if there was any kind of economic downturn, they wouldn't be able to stay afloat to wait for a recovery. They would just have to lay off employees. If they can't issue debt, then they would have to sell assets and, and fire employees to remain solvent. So this is a huge concern. And if nobody's buying corporate bonds at six or 7%, then definitely nobody is buying government bonds at two, three, or 4%. And this is the argument that people make when, uh, who, who are uh, bearish on crypto. They say, hey, if this is a threat to the government and their ability to issue debt, then they're just going to ban it. But I would argue that perhaps we've already reached a point where we can't do this. Maybe China can do it because they're not a democracy. But which political leader in America, which political party is going to ban crypto and then cause its collapse and anybody invested in crypto would then lose their money? So this has already become a toxic issue that I think no politician will address. So. Governments, in my opinion, are, uh, well, democracies anyways, in my opinion, are not going to stop it. They can't. It's political suicide. So what does that mean for capitalism? What does that mean for our economy? So to all you Bitcoin bulls out there, before you leave a comment telling me I'm an idiot, help me answer these questions. Help me solve these problems. How do we get hackers to stop ransom attacks? If you can accept payment in anonymous cryptocurrency, how do we stop hackers from attacking pipelines and meatpacking plants? Any, any kind of small industry or business that doesn't have the cybersecurity protocols to stop them. Number two is how do we continue to grow the economy if consumption declines? If everyone just puts their money in crypto because they know their money will be worth more in the future, that's not the same as investing in bonds or investing in stocks. When it goes into crypto, it just stays there. Crypto doesn't create jobs. Investing in stocks or buying bonds creates jobs. So if there's a consumption decline, uh, th this is gonna hurt tax revenue. GDP is gonna slow down, if not reverse. How do we address this concern? Number three is what happens when employees start demanding that they be paid their wages in crypto? They don't want that fiat money. How do businesses stay alive or, or stay in business when the crypto they have to pay their employees is always increasing in value. How do you set prices for customers? How do you maintain books when you're dealing in an asset that's constantly going up in value? Number four, why would capitalists, billionaires, risk their money by investing in startups, investing in innovation, investing in new ideas, when crypto is a guarantee on their money? Won't this hurt innovation? Won't this hurt the economy if we fail to advance? That's, that's the beauty of capitalism. Additionally, why would ordinary investors continue buying corporate bonds when they can guarantee themselves a higher return by buying crypto? What does this mean for our nation's corporations if they can no longer issue debt? And finally, with government bonds, if nobody's buying government bonds, what does that mean for, for our government? As someone who works in the military and needs to receive a paycheck, what does this mean for our nation's security?
Now, once again, guys, I'm not arguing that this is a certainty, that this is definitely going to happen. I'm just saying it's a possibility that crypto bulls are not, are not uh, considering, they're not talking about. They just want to say, bring down central banks, weaken governments. But they're not talking about bringing down or weakening Apple or, or Microsoft or Facebook or, uh, you know, Jamba Juice, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a consideration that crypto success could come at the cost of private investments, corporate debt, and that has a serious implication for uh, uh, people's livelihoods, people's uh, life as they understand it and they experience it under, under, under today's capitalist markets. Okay, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, if you have any comments or questions or anything I didn't consider one way or the other, leave me that information down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care.